Thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be back. And it's a bit tough following such an auspicious audience talking about the disruption of transportation. But let me try and bring you back to where we were two years ago. So two years ago, I talked about ABB ability, the solutions we have. And hopefully, you had a chance to check some of them out downstairs. ABB ability is the term we use for both our solutions, which is hardware combined with software, connectivity that we sell either as a product or as a service. But it's also the name of our platform. And today, I'm going to give you some updates on what we've done in the past two years. Because when I was here last, I said we had 180 solutions. Today, I'm pleased to say we have increased that number. We're up to 220 total solutions. I'll walk you through that in a moment. And we've also built a brand new technology platform. But I want to talk a little bit more about the impact that that has had. What have we been doing with digital in the past two years? Well, first, in terms of our customers, all of you, we're having more digital conversations. In fact, 60% more interactions are shaped by digital conversations than a year ago. And we have 185% more digital customers than we had a year ago. So there's a great upswell and uptick. But we've also been driving innovation. And as you have a chance to walk around the floor downstairs, you're going to see augmented reality, virtual reality, AI technologies, all of these new technologies to further sharpen the innovation we can bring to you. And then lastly, two years ago, a lot of our ability solutions were built in independent technology silos. My team has been working the past two years at building a brand new technology platform that for all of our new solutions, will give us tremendous agility, scalability, security. And that's all great for you, because that means we can get innovations to market much more quickly than ever before. And so if you look at the solutions that we have, and you cut across all of our businesses, and Uli shared this slide. I've added the Power Grids area to it as well. 220 solutions versus 182 years ago. Everything from our electrical distribution control system, that's a smart circuit breaker with software and connectivity. We have, of course, 800XA, our control system, which continues to be extended to the cloud with additional innovations. Our connected powertrain, which is a great example of our motion business because it combines the drives, the motors, the sensors on the gears, everything into one integrated whole. Our connected services and robotics, with Robot Studio for simulations, or in terms of condition monitoring and predicting the total useful life of transformers and other electrical equipment with Ellipse asset performance management. So these are just a few samples of our total solution set. We have over 100 solutions on display downstairs. And I'll talk in a moment as to why these are differentiated. I know this is a busy slide. I'll describe to you exactly our strategy for building the maximum amount of differentiation into our digital offerings in just a moment. And one of the reasons why we believe digital is important is not only that it helps with some of the disruptions that you heard from the panel just before, but it helps us create and deliver more value to you. Because by nature, if you think about what digital is doing, Every time we add digital technology to hardware, it's like adding a nervous system to muscle and bone. We can sense, we can act, we can respond, we can coordinate, we can collaborate. And therefore, every digital conversation is, by definition, a system conversation. So what happens when we talk digital is that instead of waiting for an RFP, we're seeing increasingly that we're invited for an RFI, or request for information. And then even more frequently, we're starting to get invited at the much earlier stage, where many of you have questions around, hey, I think I've got some inefficiencies in my supply chain or my factory or my plants. What should I be doing in terms of my digital transformation? And when we engage early on, we have better conversations. We have conversations with your chief executive, your chief operating officer, your head of your supply chain. And some of the conversations I've been privy to in the last couple of months we're having conversations about potentially creating hundreds of millions of dollars of value. So that's a game changer. And that's why digital is important, because we've seen what it can do to transportation. But trust me, these same disruptions, those same efficiencies, those same changes in economic value are happening in mining, in oil and gas, in the manufacturing sector, the chemicals industry, in all 16 of our industry segments. And we have invested to try and help that. We have invested over $300 million 
in customer innovation centers, where we can bring all of you in to help facilitate these customer conversations. And one of the other big changes versus two years ago is that historically, ABB has been very strong in what we call operations. But if you think about a customer life cycle, the technology adoption or the technology conversations can happen much earlier than the operations phase. How do you learn that we have something? How do you buy it? How do you design the deployment? How do you build it? How do you operate it? How do you optimize it? And what we've done with some recent acquisitions as well as investments, for example, in the early phases, in being able to buy online many of our products, thanks to the acquisition of GEIS, we managed to get also the world's leading B2B e-commerce platform called Empower. So we're now busy migrating and pushing all of the rest of the ABB electrification portfolio onto that platform, and we hope to add to that other products as well. We've created a marketplace where we can actually sell applications online as well. And we have our digital design tools like Robot Studio and others. But the key to our differentiation comes in the next two slides. And while everyone talks about condition monitoring, I can connect to a piece of spinning machinery and I put a sensor there. If that's, say, a jet engine or a gas turbine, that just tells you if that piece of machinery is working. Recently, I was stuck on the tarmac for three hours because the smoke alarm in the baggage compartment of my flight wasn't working. So unless you're actually monitoring the entire plane, you don't get paid when you're not flying. So that engine may be fine, but what you really need to do is you need to optimize the system. So our strategy at ABB is to look at systems and identify what we call the architectural control points. The architectural control point is the part of that system that's the brain. It coordinates, it decides, it optimizes the rest of the system. And if you can digitize that architectural control point, you can converge a lot of other value into that. And that is key to our strategy. And we've done that since the beginning with SCADA, our distributed control systems, and we continue to do that when we enter new markets like EV charging. Our chargers are not just pieces of hardware. They are the brains of a new electrical grid at the edge. We also are adding new skills to all of our systems. So when you put a computer inside of a piece of hardware, you enable what I call the app economy. You can download additional capabilities to that device and make it do new things. For example, adding speech recognition to a Yumi robot. We can also add capabilities to this intelligent edge. Yesterday, we heard from Antonio Neri from HPE about adding software to compute at the edge, the gateways. That's a critical place where we can add new functionality as well. And lastly, in the cloud. There makes the most sense. We can add new capabilities very easily. So all of our products are increasingly a combination of hardware with digital compute capability, where we're enabling additional services, either sold as a product or as a, sus a subscription service, that enable it to do more things. So here's how the ABB Ability Platform enables that. I know many of you are very curious to know what this platform is. So let's start with some of these analog legacy devices, the typewriters of the world. And how do you connect them? Well, they have digital interfaces to an intelligent edge device. That's an industrial PC, either from BNR or a partner, Hewlett Packard Enterprises. And that enables the on-ramp to the cloud. So the, for the first time, we're getting data that we can analyze, that we can display, make available on an app in the cloud. But increasingly, you're going to see smart devices that are natively compute-enabled. And those devices can either talk to that gateway or can actually talk directly to the cloud via either a wired or a wireless connection over 5G. We've also added the capability of this marketplace. So when you're ready to download new skills to your devices, you can buy them online through our marketplace. We have an app store. And then lastly, we have connectivity, third-party clouds, third-party systems, your HR systems, your ERP systems. All of those can be readily and easily connected in the cloud. So let's see an example on how we do that. So let's take the digital powertrain. That's a motor with a drive, a couple of sensors. And when we add the ability platform to it, very quickly, you're getting the data from that piece of equipment all the way into the cloud, which means that it's super simple to then have an app on your phone, on your tablet, on your PC, where you can pull up that data from anywhere. And once you do that for one of these, 
Well, then it's really simple to do that for hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, because this scales like nobody's business. So that's an example of how the ABB Ability platform gives us agility. But when we think back of where we were in 2016, we were missing a key enabling component, something called the digital twin. And the digital twin is a simulation of the physical world. And what we decided to do is to partner with the leading company in digital twin, Dassault System. And a digital twin is, is a feature. It's a capability. So the question is, what do you do with that? We believe that the key is to go from automation towards autonomy. But to become autonomous, to have systems that learn, that optimize, we need to add to the digital twin an AI that can learn, domain expertise so that it knows how to administer either a truck, a ship, a factory, or a plant. And when you combine all three of these, you can enable the transition from automation towards autonomy across a wide range of industries. And that's why I'm so delighted to be partnering with the leader in Digital Twin and for us to hear firsthand why Dassault Systems is so excited to be partnering with ABB. Let's hear it from Olivier Ribé, their head of sales. Thank you very much. Let's play the video. Hello, my name is Olivier Ribé. I'm the executive vice president of Dassault Systems for Europe, Middle East, Africa and Russia. We are very excited with this partnership that we announced with ABB. Why so? Because when you bring two leaders, a leader of industrial automation, of digital manufacturing and digital industries, with a leader of 3D experience, modeling, digital twin, virtual and real combination to innovate, you can create and you can unleash a new phase of innovation that will allow small and medium businesses and large enterprises in discrete manufacturing and process manufacturing to completely reinvent the way they produce and the way they bring to market and the way they deliver value-added services to their customers for the long term. So we are really excited with this partnership and look forward to work with all of you. Great. Thank you, Olivier. So now let's bring it home. 2016, we were the first to announce in our partnership with Microsoft that we were going to build an industrial Internet of Things platform on top of platform as a service. Since then, we've seen Schneider, Rockwell, and even GE follow us in this path. Second, we wanted to address the issue of data privacy and your concerns about the security of the public cloud head on. This is a year before GDPR, before Cambridge Analytica. We published our data manifesto, and we made it very clear that you own your data, what we do with your data, and how we handle that data. And we enforce that in the Ability Platform. We also got ready for Digital Twin. We knew that this partnership with Dassault was coming, so we put support for Digital Twin data modeling right into the platform, so you can hope to see many more integrated solutions from both of our companies in the future. And we're looking for architectural control points as we enter into the world of electrification of transportation, smart buildings, smart cities. Each of those complex environments will have new architectural control points that we can enable with the ABB Ability platform. And lastly, the reason we're doing all of this is to help you become a leader in your digital industry through the help of autonomous operations. And the reason we need to do that is because, as you heard on the panel, we're busy with the electrification of all forms of transportation. We're also accelerating the migration from fossil fuels towards renewables in the energy infrastructure. But we also have to make some major moves in terms of creating a whole new way to feed the world, a planet of over 9 billion people in the next couple of decades, and provide clean drinking water to those same people as well. So we have a massive challenge ahead of us, and that is why we need to move with speed to embrace digitalization and autonomous operation. Because as we shift towards these new ways of working, we need dramatically more people as well as automation to make those shifts happen. Because the robots are coming just in time. Thank you very much. <laughs>